Um, recess. Well, we had we had a very short meeting on uh, some legal matters. So sorry for that inconvenience. But before we do that, there's something I need to do. And believe me, if this board doesn't even know I'm going to do it. I must apologize for my outburst. But sometimes it's a little tough when you're sitting there and you got family members and you get beat up. And yes, Mr. Cone, Mr. Pinnacle, I agree that when we took this office, we had to take that, but I'm a little sensitive. Because I love my family, I love my family members, I love this community. For that, I apologize for losing my cool. And um, those who were here, I hope you accept it. And we'll move on from there. Because that's what we're all about here. With that said, Madam Secretary, could you please do a roll call? Because we're not going to do the pledge again. Mr. Castro, here. Here. Mrs. 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 That is, or everyone should have. Motion. Second. Okay, with, with the addendum, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now I have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, approval of the minutes. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, with that said, we will move to item four interested citizens. I know Mr. Ely's here, so we will have interest assistance on the agenda items now. Please come forth, sign in, and speak your piece. I knew you were back there, Kurt. Between you and Mr. Anderson, I can always count on some conversation. It brings me such joy to bring you such joy, Mr. Miners. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ely. I wanted to say that um, my comments earlier took us in a direction never intended, and if ever I've ever in any way offended anyone on this board, I certainly want to take a portion of my three minutes to sincerely apologize for that. Anyone who knows me knows I have the greatest respect for this board or the work that you do, and uh, I was really taken aback. So. Uh, I accept your apology, and again, uh, please, uh, I'd be happy to discuss that further personally at any time that you choose. In, okay. in regard to... Hold a second. Give three minutes. <laughs> Thank now you, you Mr. Myers. I appreciate that. Um, I'm here to talk about the um, unfinished business, item 6A, that appears in the agenda regarding engineering services. And I just, I just kind of feel that it's appropriate to just try to bring us all back to why we're here. Um, I've been here for a couple of years now attending meetings and watching as item after item has been discussed um, discontent with uh, the services provided by the current uh, engineering firm. And I've, I've listened to concerns about overpayment and double payment and confusion regarding retainers and work that hasn't been done properly and attempts made to have work not done properly repaired and have us pay for it again and on and on and on and on. And um, my understanding is that we were going to attempt to find a replacement for the current engineering firm. Um, I uh, would have to mention again that there is still work that is not properly done paving work that needed to be done at the March school that was such a topic of discussion still is not done correctly as I stand here this evening. Now, not a major job, but still one that so definitely represents the kind of, um, I guess, unacceptable practice that we've observed over the last couple of years. I, I ask that, uh, that this board give the new COO the opportunity to provide the input that would be appropriate. I'd ask also that 
A proper analysis and evaluation of the proposals that were received be done. By that I mean an evaluation that truly does take into consideration the cost savings that would occur with um, at least one of the proposals that rose to the top other than the uh, Dehuey or Dewey presentation. Um, I believe that nothing less would be appropriate for this district. We deserve the very, very best engineering services at the very uh, least expenditure on the part of the taxpayer, and I think a proper evaluation of that needs to be done. And our new board member, I think, would want nothing less than that, and I hope that's the case. So I would ask that um, if this needs to be tabled again, so be it. Uh, if you take a vote, I ask that you please unanimously vote not to choose our current engineering firm and that you reevaluate the proposals you have. I also want to mention that the opportunity offered by one of them, Barry Islet, for, a, uh, uh, for the opportunity for grant writing to be done, although not part of your request, I think certainly is something that needs very serious consideration. Thank you. Hi, Corinne Bizzuto, West Ward resident. Just wanted to echo um, what Kurt was up here saying, but echo it from my own perspective. And that's, I have no experience whatsoever when it comes to any kind of engineering work, engineering companies. And yet, just attending these school board meetings out of interest for other reasons last year, I learned a lot about Dewey Engineering and a lot about the confusion that they cause, a lot of the anger that comes up at these meetings as a result of their work. And I also was in attendance at a meeting where um, handicap ramps were not done to code and it was questioned by myself or perhaps others um, what the problem was, why we paid for work that was not done appropriately. And they blamed it on the city and then nobody from the city was here to defend themselves. And it went back and forth to the point where um, Henry, who was the representative, said, I will be at the next school board meeting and I will prove to you exactly how we're not at fault. The next meeting I was here, Henry was not. He was not present for many other meetings after that. I think he was on vacation. Then I learned that we paid him money to be here every time he was here, so maybe it was a cost savings to the taxpayers to not have him in attendance. Um, to this date, I don't know of any documentation that was produced. I do know of several other instances where there was confusion, concern around their work not being done appropriately, um, still to this day. And what I would ask as a taxpaying citizen, one who's four generations, by the way, nowhere near an outsider, um, and not that that matters, of course, because anyone who would choose to come to Easton is just as valuable as anybody who's been here for four generations like myself. But I'm wondering if there's anyone who would vote on this board to have this Dewey company, again, as our en engineering company. I would hope that a very clear explanation of how they would beat out any other offer that was on the table any other offer that could possibly come to the table so that the public is very clear in the confidence of the board to vote for them. Um, that being said, I have heard rumor that other companies do offer free grant writing. I would also like to hear the comments on how that would not be valuable or considered by anyone else. And then um, also other companies not um, charging any retainer fees. So how would that not be preferable for us as a district and for the taxpayers? Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to sign in again? Yeah, okay. meeting. Noel Jones, 800 Ferry Street. Congratulations, Mr. Castrovinci. Now that you're on, um, I'm going to hope for the best, and I'm very excited about your skills as a controller, so hopefully you will exert some control. Um, <laughs> I think that um, uh, none of us has to be an expert in engineering or finance to understand that for the best bidder to be selected, it's the bidder that's going to do what we need them to do 
and save us the most money. So after all of the problems we have had with Dewey over the years, and long before this newcomer came to town, um, I, I, the idea that another bidder has come forward and offered no retainer fees at all and a free grant writer so that we not only don't have to pay the grant writer, but we get the benefit of the money that they bring down and that they have a proven track record in another district for bringing down hundreds of thousands of dollars to offset the budgets of those districts. When we are in a budget crisis and in the middle of one of the worst recessions in our nation's history, it's just hard to imagine why we would renew a contract when, with Dewey when the whole purpose for putting out this RFP was to find a better engineer. And um, there, there have also been concerns brought up about nepotism with regard to this because um, <laughs> apparently the word is that um, the son of one of the administrators works for Dewey. And again, that person may be a fine professional and that administrator may be a fine yeah. administrator, but with nerves as raw as they are in this community, it's, it doesn't make sense for anyone on this board to say that they don't understand why it would raise eyebrows, that they don't understand why anyone would be worried about it and, and to go beyond that and actually be offended. So um, I just wanna say, let's please go with the bidder that's offering us the best value in this crisis, thank you. Is there anyone else wants to speak on agenda items? I'm Lynn Holden, um, West Ward, 325 North 10th Street. Um, I'm an interior designer and I share my office with an architect and for years and years we've worked with engineering firms so I'm, uh, I have a little more familiar out, familiarity than maybe some, which only causes me to come here and ask that the best firm be chosen and carefully. I don't know what your procedure is on reviewing the, the RFPs, but whatever that is, it must be done. I mean, I assume there's someone who knows what the engineering process is and understands what they're, you're getting when, when you're reading uh, RFP. Um, I have, over the years, heard so many problems. I've come to many school board meetings also and heard a lot of the problems with billing practices. Um, I've seen the photos of the March school that were put on uh, line, I don't know by who. Um, that are kind of sad, you know, except that we paid for it. Uh, or kind of funny, except that we paid for it, is what I meant. But anyway, um, and even longer, going back to the catastrophe, catastrophe of the, the fields the, at the high school, there's just been too much to just turn away and say this, this firm is doing their best for us. We need to look at other people who are willing to provide sub-quality services to us. And I hope that everybody can see their way to doing that. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Good evening, Mr. Myers. Everybody knows me at this point, Bob Fainel. And just to give you a little background, I've had interaction with Dewey and Associates, Barry Isaac, CNC, and various other construction firms and engineering firms. Okay? And there's something to be said about all. It comes down to, and don't take my comments wrong, but it comes down to the direction that they're given, the specifications that they're given, the attention that the projects are given. And if that is not handled properly, you get the product that you get afterwards because of, not, of that lack of attention. I've been involved and I've seen projects that, and I'll speak real directly, uh, that Dewey and company have performed, and I look at them and scratch my head and say, 
can't believe the quality. And then I turn around and you look at the specs of what was given to them and what they were told in the direction. And you can see why they are where they are. I've worked within a couple other industries or a couple other uh, groups that use them. And I've seen the specs that they were given, the contracts they were given. And there's a big difference. I see the qualifications and requirements here in Easton have been lackadaisical, low, and based on that, you can't expect a high product. People have to be involved and out there and walking and understand what you have here, whether it be a roof issue, whether it be a footer issue, or the fields. So you have to think about all that as you look at it and you go to make a decision. You can talk about grant writing. Did you ask them if they want to write grants? Anybody can write grants. The key is how much money do you really bring in and where do you bring it in from? There's a lot of grant writers out there. There's independent groups up in Stroudsburg that'll do it for you. And sometimes they find out they don't really get anything. They wrote, wrote a lot, but there's no income from it. So again, all I can do is say, consider the specifications and the requirements and did the firm actually meet what you've given them in the past or did they really fall short? And who was administering it and who was overlooking it? You want to go back to that because if you lack the oversight, which is the public, the oversight of the board, the board, the oversight of what's going on, then you have to look at it that way. So it comes back to the quality and your oversight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Arif Fazil. I'm the president of Dewey Engineering. And I don't typically do this, but I think it's worth a little history lesson because some statements have been made that are totally incorrect. We were engaged by the Eastern Area School District in 2002. This was after the field issue, the Kunkel track fiasco. We were brought in after the, uh, the, the district had numerous issues with the high school project, addition, renovation project, as well as the Kunkel track. At the first project we were asked to look at was the uh, was, uh, location of modular classrooms at the high school, portable classrooms. And one of the reasons was you needed it in six months because you had such an explosion of, of uh, enrollment. I came to the forefront and advised the school district for at almost the same cost through plan con reimbursement, we could accommodate the classroom addition, the, the brick classroom addition that extends out towards the uh, track side of the project. And we did that in a record six months and got you the reimbursement, got the project done on time, under budget. After that, we've done numerous projects for the Eastern Area School District. The biggest one we did, which we're very proud of, was the new middle school campus. And we were involved in the task force. Along the way, we've done numerous projects, everything from the Cheston parking lot to roof replacements, various miscellaneous projects, boiler replacements, etc. And to a fault, none of them have had any issues. The one project where we did have an issue, which you're all referencing, are the handicap ramps at March Elementary. And to this day, there is significant controversy in municipality after municipality how you meet those requirements when you're dealt with slopes that are significantly already greater than 1 in 12 and how you accomplish them. There are waivers that are available. Nonetheless, there was some confusion on that particular issue out of the myriad of projects we've done. That is the only one that there ha was controversy raised over. In the end, it was addressed by me personally at no cost to this district, and the items were corrected. Okay? That's one issue I want to say. The other issue that was mentioned was competition. We went through a very rigorous RFP process. And it's my understanding that we offered various options to the district, everything from the hourly rate that we've been doing over the past few years to a fixed retainer fee. And the district chose that option. We went, uh, underwent a strict interview with the board, and I know there were other competitors that were interviewed. So I can't speak to why we are still being considered as one of the best to be considered for the Eastern Area School District. And I just want to end with one thing, we take very seriously the trust that is put in us by the district to implement whatever project and whatever direction we're given. 
and we take that very seriously and have always given you uh, the best value that we can possibly do. And so with that, I respectfully request that you, you know, consider my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public, public comment? Mr. Pinnabon, mm -hmm. and you do have to sign in again? Yes, sir. Frank Pinnabone, back again, round two. Um, what I was told is we had three engineering firms that came to uh, do business for us, Mr. Dewey, or Dewey being one. Um, I was told that the three set of eyes that reviewed them have ties to Dewey Engineering. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of, of uh, favoritism or, or anything of that nature. What I would like to see happen is a set of eyes or three pair of eyes that do not have alliances or uh, any other conflict to look at the contracts. Um, sir, I have nothing against your company, but unfortunately for the companies, my loyalty lies with the community and not with the companies. And I think we need to make sure that our taxpayers are being taken care of um, more than we're taking care of the companies. So I would like to see a separate pair of eyes look at these contracts and just make sure before we make a decision on whether it be Dewey or someone else that, uh, you know, let them bid it out. Let us get quality work for a great price for the taxpayers and the citizens of this community. Thank you. Anyone else we speak on uh, agenda items? With that said, we're going to move on to reports, information, and action. <coughs> Superintendent. First, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Jen Holtzberger for her service and dedication to our school district. As she had said, all of our school board members put many, many hours into this, and they truly do have the best interest of our students. Um, you know, it has been said that it is a thankless job. I look at it as one that many children have been had have had a profound impact and a positive impact by what you do on a daily basis. And I thank you. We wish you and your family well in England Chocolate, yeah. she likes chocolate, yes. Uh, in addition, uh, we have something very special tonight. And the gentleman that's going to speak is Sam, I hope I say your last name, San Quinti, Quintito. Okay. Welcome. My name is Sam Sanguinito, and I thank the board for allowing us to speak. <laughs> I'm, an Easton, <laughs> I'm an Easton Area High School graduate, the class of 64, here tonight representing a newly formed group that is planning a memorial to be built on the Easton High School property. Several months ago, Dom Ray, class of 63, Chuck Snyder, class of 63, and I came up with the idea to build a Vietnam Veterans Memorial on East Mary <coughs> High School property to honor all classmates who served in or were killed in that war. Both Chuck and myself served in that war and were inspired by former East Mary High School graduate Robert LeBanc, a Marine whose recent story <coughs> came to our attention on the internet, who also graduated from Easton in 63. 
I spoke to Principal Mike Cuck several months ago about this memorial, and I'm here today to pursue our idea. The concept for this memorial is similar to many that we have, uh, that have been built in this country, a wall of names to honor veterans. We would have a, a slate piece for each of the classes from 1959 through 1975 with everybody's name on it who served in Vietnam. The area around the memorial would include benches and appropriate landscaping. At this time, we don't have a final figure on the cost, but are confident that, our, that through planned fundraising events and donations, we will meet the cost. Our idea is to honor all Eastern Area High School classmates who were in or killed in the Vietnam War with this memorial on the school ground. If you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Board members, I would just like to say this as a former United States Navy man. Right <laughs> <laughs> I got a brother who's at least in cemetery who didn't make it. So, thank you. I have some, this is a, uh, a flyer that we made up. Uh, I believe he's going to be on the front of T-shirts that we're going to send. Uh -huh. I should have figured she did. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a website if anybody would like to go to it and uh, Make sure check you get that out. information to Jim so all board members can get it. Oh, you want me to turn around and look? <laughs> so you can see my bald head? <laughs> um, there it is. So I don't, I don't know if you want to see some pictures of things that we've kind of looked at. And, I thank you from thank you. the bottom of my heart. Uh, I don't think any board member is not in favor of this thing. I think we should just give you our blessing. Do we have an idea where we would be doing this site? Yeah, where are you going to look at? We have three sites that I looked at. Um, as you go up 25th Street and you go into the parking lot, to the left right there below Sleepy's, I don't know if that's going to be available or not. Or the road that kind of goes up around to the front there by the... Uh, where the old Votex used to be yeah. in there, or where East of Buick used to be, across the street from there. But there's a lot of trees and benches there, so I don't know what's going to be, where we're going to be. We'll work with you. Thank you. And if we won't, if who's ever coming on after us, sure, we'll work with you. Yes, ma'am. You have just uh, way, wiggling. May, may I add one thing? Uh, it's difficult for us to get all of the names. Our research committee is having a terrible time because a lot of us graduated from 62 to 66. And so if you know people, we have forms that are to be filled out with the names and, and all the other information for anyone who served in Vietnam in that time period. Please help us to get these forms to the proper people and if they are deceased to a relative or someone who can make sure that we don't miss someone on our own. Um, one thing we have, uh, we do on Veterans Day is we have a young lady who does something that packs notes that it names all of our veterans. So we will get that information to you. Be low minutes yet, teacher. I would appreciate it. I am Donna Kahn. This girl is heading our, Sharon Jones is heading our research committee. So if you could get that to either one of us. Joan, we can make contact with them, whoever we need to, so you can get that information. We can also put your information on our that. website. So I don't know, I don't know if you've heard me on the radio. We're on the radio advertising it. Yes. That's a wonderful thing. Do we, like said, do we need authorization to use the logo, the Easton logo? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Varsity's logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the logo. It's the Varsity's logo. They established it in 1955, and I can guarantee you, they're not going to argue with you about it. Okay. Mr. President, thank you. I just have one uh, question of reference. Will this be the first uh, memorial of, of its kind, or do we have other memorials uh, acknowledging the uh, service of past graduates, such as Korea or World War II? Or? I am not aware if we do or don't. I don't think we do. So I think this is the first one. Okay. This is the first one. All right, thank you. I, thank you very I much. thank you so much for bringing that forth to this board. It's a wonderful thing, like I said, as a former Navy man, I got an Army guy here, you know. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. And when I went in 75, it was a great thing. But thank you so much for that. I, you know, that's a forgotten bunch of people that should never be forgotten. Can I, I need to be selling those t-shirts? Eventually. This is just 
Of course, you got the mock up there. This was just a really quick, quick, quick. Okay, if you need to get hold of some people, do that. Um, there's people and, at the and actually, <laughs> one of your school teachers, Valerie Wheeler Davis, is going to be helping us to design the most okay. that okay. And it will be We do have canisters around the area for donations. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make one suggestion that it would be a great opportunity for an educational experience for our students if you wanted to contact student council and see if they could help in any way. I think we that. Did ask, and we probably will bring them in, but we didn't want to fall three months behind through the summer. No, yeah, I understand that, but I thought that would be a great opportunity for them to educate themselves about the war and about the efforts that you have going on. Now, when you get to design. Please bring it to Billings and Grounds. We will. Yes. You can contact Joan or myself. I can tell you when the meetings are. Okay. I chair that committee. Anybody else have any comments for these people? Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. That's a good thing. Thank you. Mr. Solicitor. Uh, just very briefly, Mr. President, uh, I was asked of the, earlier to uh, just review uh, the procedures. Okay. Very quickly, with, with the possible, with, with uh, evidently one and the, and the, uh, the, the imminent uh, likelihood of two, um, uh, two year seats up, I thought it was appropriate uh, to uh, remind those people who might be interested the school board has no involvement whatsoever in getting candidates on the ballot, that we have to seek um, a nomination uh, from your respective political party or take your try your luck at a, uh, a writing. So the position that is uh, filled tonight is, of course, as you know, just until December. And if there's any others that are filled uh, with vacancies that occur before, 60 days before the election, <coughs> they'll also be filled only for um, that uh, December time period. So nomination by your political party to seek out uh, their procedures and get yourself on the ballot. The time limit is August 25th. You have to be at, you have to have your credentials at the election board by August 25th. Thank you. Can I add one thing? If you wanted to go as an independent, the paperwork is due August 1st. So if you're not affiliated with a party, <laughs> but you would like to run for one of those seats in November, August 1st is the deadline <coughs> to get your signatures. Thank you, Mrs. Ellison. Association reports. We have Helen Jones from the uh, Transportation Department. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that, though, if that's okay. Since Marie's not here, Marie used to take care of uh, safety. this. Yes, okay. Actually, it's the Workman's Comp Safety Committee, because I understand there's another one Excuse in the district me. also. Well, I didn't know that there was another one, actually, but there is. Um, <laughs> Last week, we, Carol and I, uh, took a tour through this building. It was your turn. And we found some things that, you know, we're hoping that you will address. And yesterday, we had the opportunity to have our monthly meeting here, which was a great experience. Uh, we had the opportunity to have a fire alarm, okay? <laughs> so we all went out. Then we were told to come back in, and then we were told to go back out again. But we found some things that we're really hoping that will be corrected that we found yesterday. And I guess uh, Carol, at this point, will be submitting those recommendations to you. And one in particular that I found, and Mr. Riley may be able to help me on this, is it not um, 
code or whatever that you have a floor plan in each room for an evacuation? Fire. Yeah. Fire evacuation. Uh, without actually reference looking it up, I would assume so. Okay, because building. I don't believe this building has any in any room. I could be mistaken. However, I know the room we were in had none. Okay, so that, that is one thing that I know this committee is going to be asking of you to have that done, even if it's not code. You know, it, it, you have people coming in and out, residents and all, that even though you have those signs, exit signs, you know, it would be important for them to see that. Okay, and another thing is um, the library has joined us. For whatever reason, we neglected the library, okay, and now they have somebody sitting on the committee. Uh, and that's going to be the next building that the group goes to and looks at, okay, and has their meeting. And the walkthrough will be on August 17th, and the meeting will be held on August 24th. And once again, um, anybody that wants to come from this board is more than welcome to come. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Madam President. Sir President, because <laughs> now I can say that. Um, my brain's in a million different places. We don't have a lot going on right now other than preparing for the school year that's coming up. Um, there are a group of about 10 teachers that are preparing to leave on Sunday for the leadership conference in Gettysburg. We will be spending a week there with other teachers from across the state of Pennsylvania. I will be going and it's, it's a highlight of my summer. It's really nice to connect with teachers from all over the state and learn Lots of new things, so not a lot of time for tanning, lots of time in classes. That's exciting. And I wanted to say something about um, the exchange that happened before. You know, there are many times when we don't always agree on things. And uh, Mr. Myers and Ms. Holzberg, we sat across from a table and we're not necessarily always in agreement, but healthy discussion is always <laughs> important. And it was nice, the discussion's important, but the respect is important as well. So, you know, it's nice that at the end of the day, we can sit and laugh with each other as well. So, conversation is important. I'm glad the conversation was happening. So, have a great summer. It's nice to see everyone's tans and glowing faces. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in August. Thank you, Jeff. Especially yours, Mr. Myers. Nice and, <laughs> nice and glowing tonight. <laughs> Must be my bald head. <laughs> okay. We don't have any other. We'll move on to executive session reports. On Thursday, June 23rd, the following individuals, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Katravinci, Ms. Fisher, Mrs. S, Mrs. Holzberger, Ms. Mrs. Leonard Ellison, Mrs. Mandarino, Dr. McGinley, Mr. Rowley, and myself, we're at a, we had a meeting for the purpose of discussing legal matters. On Wednesday, July 20th, which was last night, uh, we met from 6.30 to 10.30. The following individuals were present, Ms. Fisher, Mr. Groin, Mrs. S, Mrs. Holzberger, Mrs. Mandarino, Dr. McGinley, and myself purpose was to discuss personnel legal matters. And I'll add to it that we met tonight for a brief moment and we discussed personnel matters. With that said, we're gonna move on to six unfinished business. The subject is engineering services that were tabled from six to six with a vote of 43, which at that time we were required to have a five person vote. With that said, I have to move for a motion before we can have discussion. Motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion? Board members, now's your time to speak. I have one concern um, that no one's really mentioned at this point. Oh, I'm sorry, before we do that. Oh, okay. Um, I apologize. I was just reminded of Dr. Volcano, who has been in the hospital and just got home, wished to be called when we were to discuss the Dewey Engineering contract. So, Joan, can you get him before we get into that care? He's recovering. Eight board members here now, Mr. Castro, and Mr. Plinger. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put you on speaker. Okay. Thank you. Pat, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, I'm hoping you're feeling better. Well, I'm just I got out of the hospital today, and I'm quite weak, but I'm, I'll get there. I'll get back to normal. Okay. I wish you a speedy recovery. With that said, we were at, already voted and we moved to a motion and Carrie was going to start the discussion. So you can pay attention and if you want to chime in, I will try to catch you. Go okay. Carrie. Um, my, one, my one concern and my one comment that particularly hasn't been mentioned at this point is that as we went through this process over the last month and a half, um, we have now hired a new COO who would be the person that will directly be interacting with whatever company it is that we choose or vote on, whether it be tonight or whenever. Um, we also have a new board member who is very unfamiliar with any of the information. And I would recommend and ask that we motion to, to table this agenda item until we have an opportunity to update the new board member and also have input from the COO who has not had an opportunity to see any of the paperwork. So my motion would be, if, I, if we could, that I would like to see this tabled until we have that opportunity. Okay. There's a motion on the floor to table this particular item. Is, is, is there a second? I'll second that. Discussion? All right, we call for a vote right away. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 Pull the board. Mr. Castor Vincent? Aye. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Hess? Yes. Mrs. Holdberg? Yes. Mrs. Ellison? Yes. Mrs. Mandarino? No. Mr. Riley? No. Dr. Volcano? No. At this table until next meeting. Okay, oh, Dr. Okay. Volcano. Well, uh, please. I'll, I should be there next meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks for calling. Yep. All take right, take care of yourself. Bye bye. I will. Bye. Right. This motion is now tabled. It will come up in the August meeting. Therefore, uh, any information that Mr. Castor Vinci needs, uh, I'll make sure that we get to him as a new board member. And the COO. And the COO. The COO will be on board August 1st? He will Correct. already have it. Well, I'm just saying to make sure that he gets all the information from the prior, do you see it? From the prior. Yes, Mrs. Elson. Thank you. I see what you're saying. So we will indeed table it, and he will get his information. With that said, let's move on to the next item. Number seven, personnel issues. Motion. Is there a second? I don't know why we received that. We only should be voting on yes. that. Are we clear? Yep. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. There's a lot of things that we're voting on tonight that are that are extremely new to me. Um, I prefer not to vote. I will not be voting yes. Can I just abstain or should I abstain because you're abstain? Okay. But you're fine with that. So we understand that he will not okay. be voting on anything because you just got the seat won. <laughs> All right? You are given the green light. Okay. With that said, voting on personnel issues. Motion? Yes. Have you did that? Mm -hmm. Call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, now we're moving on the voluntary and the mental coaches. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? With that said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Mr. Riley has opposed. Okay. New business <coughs> academics from Dr. Roberts. We have a student expulsion from Mr. First. Motion to adopt adjudication prepared by a special counsel. The student 11993. The student shall be expelled for the first semester 
2011-2012 school year, readmission is based upon conditions outlined in the adjudication. So is there a motion? So Second. Second. Any discuss there's no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, B, Community Literacy Training Liaison Contract Renewals from Dr. Roberts. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Conference request from Mr. First. Motion. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we go to number nine, miscellaneous. A, the resignation of Mrs. Holford from Region 3 as the school board. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Yes. yes Good ma question, Jen. Yep. We appreciate everything you've done. I thank you. You've been instrumental to this board. But my question is, if we are taking this resignation as of the 21st, why are we waiting till the 31st? Why is it 10 days difference here? You know, it's funny, when I wrote the letter, I was looking at when the date was for the next September meeting, and I thought it was giving the board the opportunity, giving them the 30 days so you didn't have to schedule the meeting. And I'd asked the question, but then I was away, and nobody could, you know, give me back, so. Because if you're doing I mean, if you, if you want to make it effective today, you can certainly make a motion to make it effective today. I thought I was, you know, I mean, I doing every, right by well, absolutely. the board. That you have to do, like getting yourself ready. This is like the last thing you should have on your mind is this. Well, if anything, I mean, your, your call. I, I, I don't I think it, yeah. I didn't want to know Yeah, no, no, I mean, that was the reason is, you know, I, I thought that it was so that the 30 days was from the effective right. date and then you didn't have to change the September board meeting as we did this month with Ms. Bellotti's resignation. August. 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 August meeting, yeah. Any other discussion on this? So then can I make a motion that we say it's effective July 21st? Can we do that? Sure, it's fine with me. Okay, and with the uh, with the acceptance of the maker of the motion and the seconder, uh, the minutes can reflect that. Except for that, the only thing I would ask is I, I still need some time with my. Um, I just want to make sure I can still le yeah you know, back up my need. stuff and whatever. Granted, that can be done. Okay. That's not an issue. Need a second on that motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. That we are accepting her resignation of tonight. As of, the As of the conclusion of tonight's meeting, you will get your hair free and do whatever you want. Okay. I, I have one question just regarding that. Um, and it's for Mr. Foreign. Um, if she's giving her resignation tonight, is it the board that presents this to the Board of Election that there is going to be an open position or how does that go? Well, Joan sends that down. They make, they make them aware, but that's all we do. There's nothing else. That's our, our only function is to make them aware. Right, and so that should be done in a timely ma fashion since we're getting closer and closer to the time frame of when they need to write the ballot, correct? It goes out tomorrow. It will go out tomorrow. Okay. Any other questions? Next this person, well, okay, this person then will be falling into the same as we did. They will not automatically be on for the full term. They will also be put on for the election. Just <coughs> if we did and P select someone at our next meeting, which is the 18th of August. Is Correct? It? Yes. Our next meeting is the 18th I of just, August. What I was trying to say is I want to make sure that it's very clear to anybody in the public that they understand it will only be until until December, until the same as, as right. what Sarah's right. 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 I just want to make sure that people understand that. Okay. Are we clear with that? Yes. All right. With that said, can we move on to the next item? Mm -hmm. Okay. Set a date for a special meeting to interview a candidate for Region 3. I think we already discussed that. It is August the 18th, 6.30. Same procedure that we had tonight. Okay. See, August school board meeting executive session, July 21st. Why? Where did I go? Did I miss that? Let's be, then we go to C. Hey, they get the vote on B. We need, okay, I'm sorry. Motion to set the date. We need a motion to set the date then. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. 
I am ahead of myself. I have, one, I have one question. Are we advertising? All that's being done tomorrow. The advertising goes too, okay. All done in one fell swoop. All right, with that said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? August 18th, 6.30 will be the next meeting to reappoint someone, then we'll follow by a board meeting. Okay, now we're going to see August school board meeting executive session. Motion to change the meeting from the 25th, the regular board meeting, to Thursday, August 18th, immediately following special board meeting. Change the executive session date from the 24th to 17th. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? If not, can I call for a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, advertisement for Region 3. Take care of your false rating for what you want to do. Motion <laughs> to approve the attached advertisement to the vacancy of Jen Holford. Motion. 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 Second. No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we're going to move to E organizational chart. Motion to accept the new organizational chart. Second. Second. Discussion. Yes. Um, while I know that some of the changes that are on here have been made to um, try to find some cost savings, I have extreme concern. Uh, about the elimination of a uh, director of pupil services position and also the change now adding the director of athletics under our assistant superintendent of schools I just am afraid that our administration while I know some people in the community complain that we're administratively top-heavy we have so many new initiatives going on in the district um, these are two departments that are faced with legal policy matters, all sorts of issues that come up all the time that are going to require extreme amounts of time from those administrators. And I don't feel that this reorganization and the elimination of those positions in the long run is going to, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but effectively meet the needs and all of the new initiatives that have been put in place in the past you know year or two like dr. Duffy was just did so much and I, I just I have concerns All, all the points that have been made obviously are valid. I think it's important to note that when we did advertise for the assistant superintendent, it was imperative that that person have pupil services certification. And the, the person that was chosen, Dr. Roberts, does possess that. She was a school psychologist. She has pupil services certification as well as her level of eligibility <coughs> along with many other athletes. <coughs> And the reason for that choice and that vision was that we knew uh, as we progressed that we needed to do more with less. Uh, as we venture on this path, we are obviously, we, we spoke as a team, Mr. First, uh, Dr. Roberts, and uh, we are all in agreement. It is a lot, there's no doubt about it. And it is our, responsibility obviously to do the best for our students and to make sure that no child falls um, through the cracks and what I had asked the, the board in executive session when we talked about personnel matters was to move forward in this direction however to, to closely monitor the situation and in the event we felt that we needed to place another position that we would have that conversation ASAP so we feel that with the guidance, as well as we have progressed with the audit, et cetera, we feel that we're in a better position than we were three years ago. <coughs> we still have many things to do, and we want to make sure that all of our 
staff members and our students have the support. So this is a path that we are going to obviously start and if we need to put additional assistance in, we will be the first ones to say that is what we, we need to do. And that was the recommendation that I had made along with, with our staff. I, I think that another note that's really important is um, Mr. Prokrivsak, although his line where he was in the organizational chart will not report directly to Dr. Roberts. I don't, I, I don't know if someone had mentioned that there was a change in that. He's down below, yes. he's now below Dr. He's Roberts. With, he's with all the directors. That was a request that when the president of the board and I sat down and we looked at the organizational chart, he had asked for all the directors to be in alignment. So who, that was- Who the asked that question? I asked that question. I asked that question. Well, now, you can- It actually, that's the nice thing to do. But it, it is, I think it's important to note, it, the reporting mechanism has not changed. And his position has not changed. It's just the visual image on, on the organizational chart that is different. Mm -hmm. The responsibilities are the same, the reporting mechanism is the same. Just positioning of it. Say what you have to so, say, Jen. I'm sure I don't need to. I I, I'm just going to reiterate that there is a concern because of the observation that we've had at the board level as to the amount of work that each of those people have done and are continuing to do <coughs> and what Dr. Duffy did that there is a concern that there's a total elimination of a position and it now falls under one person who had more than a full plate before. Um, and the only thing that with, with the athletic director is that it now is below, so he actually answers to, if you look at the organizational chart, he's answering to, with the lines, he's answering to the assistant superintendent. Or does he, or does he jump over that line, go directly to the superintendent? <coughs> it goes to the superintendent. So the, the line is drawn right to the superintendent. Well, I said no, it, it, goes, no, it, goes, it goes first to the assistant superintendent. superintendent. There's, that, a, there's an intersection here. Yes. In other words, we need to make a show break. jump over. Right. That's that why he was up higher for that. Right. And I, and I understand that. So now the indication if you, is if you look at the organization, organizational chart, if, if someone in the community was to go to the organizational chart, the assumption would be that he is answering to the assistant superintendent because that's the first line that you get to that intersects with his line. It looks like he has two boxes. Because the way there's a, there's a cross and not a, a loop over And it wasn't that way before. But to be, to be, perfect, to be perfectly honest about this scenario, the reason I looked at it, and in the past, and I don't know when it happened, and this is no reflection upon Mr. Prokripsak, the athletic director for years reported to the high school principal. We just need to have an accurate representation. Before you were. No, no. It was always on the, the board. Dennis, since Dennis has been here. Superintendent when Ford, Dennis was, was here. Athletics, since Mr. Maitland, Mr. Shriver, were all on the superintendent's board. Super team. Uh, whatever that was called. Excuse that me, time. does he want to come to the podium? I'm sorry. Does he want to come, yeah, to, the come to the podium? If you wish to. Prior to my time being here and Mr. Shriver, the uh, athletic director was reported to the superintendent and was part of the superintendent's committee, executive team, uh, well before my time. That didn't change since I've been here. Mr. Shriver reported to the superintendents that were here when he was here, and he was here since 1993, I believe. So that hasn't changed since then. And before that time, I believe Mr. Maitland even reported to the superintendent, and he was here for about 20 to 25 years, I believe. <clears throat> So my comment is that, that whatever is reflective of this should be accurate so that the community knows who the chain of command is whenever there should be a need for them to see where the chain of command is. And the way it appears now, it appears that the first line of authority from Jim is the assistant superintendent. And if that's the way you intended, that, that, that's the way it appears. Yes, yes. yes. It's, I just want to make it clear that 
there was no delineation from who is re he is reporting to. He is going to report to the superintendent. His job description has not changed. And Dr. Roberts, the assistant superintendent, will not oversee the athletic director. So this needs to be changed. This, it, it was. You know, I understand that, but if this is the one that we're so there accepting. Needs to be a line right. And it needs to be put up directly to the superintendent, and that would solve the issue. And I, I think one thing that, that is important when we talk about pupil services, it is not just Dr. Roberts that is going to do that. The transition plan that went out to the board that Dr. Roberts and Mr. First um, uh, worked on, it is a multitude of different responsibilities. Steve's going to do help yes. assist me with counseling. That's yes. The only yes. All the other responsibilities will fall under, will fall under just you. Just to make sure right. we're clear on that. Right. Because I saw it late this afternoon, and I think we, we just need to clarify that internally the way those lines are drawn. Because so the psychologist, wouldn't it be important? I don't know. I, I'm just, that is a position typically in a school district. Yes. In some school districts, yes. Especially a large in, district. Right, yes. I mean, Yes. We're huge. With issues that, that such as our diversity yes. and everything. You're correct. Okay, so that being the case, to have all those people under her, if there's a difference as to who is answering to who, that probably should, instead of one lump sum group of people here going up to Dr. Roberts and Mr. First, if some are reporting more directly to Mr. First, then maybe that should be indicated on there so so that we're all clear as to who is answering to who. I, mean, really, really I will tell you, when we did the organizational chart and I sent it out about two weeks ago, I had asked for input. So this way, when we came to this point, that there would be clarification on if, if someone saw something, obviously more eyes are better than one. We want it, we want it to be, you know. And I understand that, but this, this one just came in Friday, last Friday. Last Friday. Right. Yes. With the, with the new change. change. Right. Yes. Right. So and this and this and this other comment president. came up with Jen bringing it up again, and I would reiterate it again because I just would. I feel very, very confident in my thoughts that eliminating that one position. So I would bring that up again. But if now I'm hearing that there's a delineation as to who is in authority over who, perhaps that should be indicative of what we see here on this organizational chart. That was the transition plan. But yes, I'm talking. I understand. Yes. I mean, this is what the public will see. Yes. Well, does it need to be clear? Do we need to clear it, make changes before yes. we vote on it? I, I'm unsure who the access administ administration assistant reports to. There's two lines going up from that position. One is to the assistant the superintendent, and one to the associate director, auxiliary services. Who's the boss of this person? That is, that is um, Barry Cortez. Where is it? And he works Max with many, many people in our county. There, into there. Yeah, and then he diverges it into these two. Who's his direct supervisor? And then if he also has <coughs> responsibility to somebody else, you can put a dashed line in there or something to indicate there's a <coughs> another relationship yeah. instead of a solid one. No, he will. He will be over. Um, the COO will be his direct boss. Well, he doesn't go to the COO directly. The assistant administrator, the access administrator, assistant goes either to the director, associate director of auxiliary services, or goes to assistant superintendent. That's because he works with the assistant superintendent as well. But his re direct report is the COO. He, this, this particular person. So is the is associate director is, isn't even in the chain? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. The access administrator reports directly to the COO? The access administrator direct, is a direct report to the associate director of auxiliary services. And the second line going to the assistant superintendent. Indicates that they work, they do work together, yes. But that's not a direct line of <laughs> that is not their boss. So it should be a dashed line or some other type of line indicating 
the relationship. Okay, I think what we need to do with this is, uh, I, I'd like to make a motion myself to send this back to the administration and this time folks uh, look at it and make the changes and get them in so we can iron this out so we're not sitting here discussing something that we could probably have taken care of beforehand. Because if I was the only one that paid attention to this thing, uh, you know, let's, let's be a little more proactive with this thing. We have discussion of this. Let's look at this closely on the end and let's see if we can get it back to you and get whatever changes we need to get done. I don't think that you were the only one that paid attention to it, just so that we can be clear on that. I think we were, I was on on the page. I think many of us were on the page, and we haven't had come together with a discussion where we all had different thoughts, so. Here's an issue, and I'm not trying to be negative about it, is that um, we need to understand something. If we're giving things to look at, and we wait till we get here to discuss it, why are we even bother sending them out? I have, I have concerns with this. Well, if you're sending it out, you need to send it out for people to at least assess what is being, what is going to be voted on. That's important. And there's a discussion here because there are some things that people had questions on. And we've been asked to, you know, look these things over. We do. But not necessarily is there always the opportunity for all of us to be sitting around at a table talking other than a board meeting where it's supposed to occur. So, in other words, and I'm just asking this question. The only way we can react to something is if we're sitting around in front of each other to get things done. Is that your step? No, really? that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying some of these things warrant some discussion amongst a group of people together. And, and when that happens, you can't do it unless you are in a public meeting because if you have more than how many members of a board at one meeting, discuss. Anyway, yeah, I don't need to review that. Uh, I was just trying to make a point. That Let's move on. I had a motion out there to a second that we send it back. Let them work on it. Second. Anybody else? Um, on my motion, is there a, I, I, I'd like to call for a vote on that that we send it back. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we'll kick it back to you. So anybody who has some suggestions, <coughs> please forward them to the superintendent's office. Organizational charge. At that point, we already need, now we need to make a motion to table the organizational chart. Because right now we have a motion open, don't we? No, that's 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 uh, so what you just did. It's in the nature of a motion to right. recommit to a committee, which is a tantamount to a motion to table. Thank you, sir. So we'll a Good. Let's move on. Yeah, PSBA voting delegation for legislation policy. Request action to approve an interested board member to attend the 2011 PSBA Legislative Leadership Conference and appointment up to three board members to serve voting delegates uh, to the Legislative Politi Policy Council meeting on October the 20th, 2011. The voting delegates are required to be registered for the conference. Is there a motion on the floor on this? Motion. There's a second. Second. Any discussion? I just want to say that the entire weekend includes 18, the 18th through the 21st, just okay. so people are aware of that. And where is it at? Hershey. Is that where you went last year? Correct. And it was you, Jen, and Jody? Jody. All right, with that discussion, um, before we go any further with this, is there anyone interested? I think we need to ask at this point. I would be interested. As much as I would love to, I don't know if I can get off the Anybody else? I can't really, you know. How, Carrie, what's the deadline on? Do you have yeah, the deadline is, well, the housing deadline is September 8th. They usually can work with you on just, if you're just going to participate in that day, they can work with. Can we kind of table this thing? Till so August. Our, so we can look at our calendars right. to see if we're available? Right. Do we, um, do we have to, uh, do we actually have to appoint the individual, but like the names? You can't just we, say we agree right. that three. Right, I thought we had to send the names down last time. August Who was August going August 1st? They're asking August 1st. They will work with you, but as far as if you need to, change or so can we make a motion to appoint mrs ellison and two, two, two other, other board members two other, as they have the their name. opportunity to review their calendar because you don't know who will be sitting in no nope. that yeah, right this seat, this seat <laughs> at that point Wait, is that with mrs ellison so far is volunteered to go that's the 18th through the 20th. Anyone else interested? Can we see it? Second. So. Even a second person. Yes. 
Sure. Just for her? Okay, we need a second on Mrs. Elton. On Zach. Second. Okay, all those in favor for Mrs. Elton say aye. 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 Okay, that's who else is, might be interested so we can appoint them. I don't know. I can't make a commitment. I can't. I really don't know. So the next ones would have to be voted on next month then, is that correct? So we can only... We have, to, we have to submit three names if we're going. That's the problem. But we, you're saying we can change can't the we, names if we... Can't we on we'll ask for motion three right. say that right. we... Okay. Can we ask for three I believe plus? what we did last time was we... Because that was the alternate. I believe what we did last time was we said that we would ha allow up to three board members go. Right. We at that time did not have the names because we weren't quite sure of the four of us which were going. Can we at least do that the same this time? Yes. It's fine. That we don't have to vote on... We, well, we're just voting on the one name on the until side. other people. I don't people. know if we have to actually vote on the name, do we? Well, you have to vote on the name if they're a delegate. You actually issue credentials. If you're a voting delegate. And we are. Those are the okay. Okay. We'll be voting we can, we can send three voting delegates to this conven convention. Well, okay. Okay, we're going to have three names. We're going to change it. So can we just... Submit three names. Can we can we make a motion to appoint um, Mrs. Hess and um, Mr. Riley as the other two delegates to the legislative conference? Mr. Riley, I, I, I just wanted to balance out the edge of the table that I was. Do <laughs> you put my name in the exchange later if needed? Mrs. Hess, do we need an alternate for that? Because Mrs. Ellison, we already voted for. Right. So the other two, do we need an alternate? One of the others would care to when they come on. We can, if I can't make it, then okay. Them. We'll go with that then. If, that, if, if that's what we're going with, then I like. Is that a motion on your that part? That's a motion. Is there a second on that? <laughs> second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You got it. Okay, we'll move on to that. Okay, buildings and grounds. No. Uh, oh, no sorry. Am I wrong? No. Thank you. Buildings and grounds. E e e e a M S C C P V system prevention maintenance agreement. Motion to approve the attached system prevention maintenance of forty nine hundred and fifty bucks. Motion. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. We have B. Buildings and grounds finance matter. Motion to. Well, one, 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 you just take this. There's one, two, three, and four. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? No discussion on these bills? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Let's move on to new business, financial matters. Renewal of the 2011-2012 student athletic accident insurance policy. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. This went up, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. This one. It went up. Like All those in favor else. say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. Stop loss insurance carrier. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. I have a question. Shoot it. Which option are we selecting? There's two options. They recommended one they recommended. in their paperwork. It was. I want to make sure there's a motion that we're clear which one we're choosing. Option one or option two? Avalon. 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 Avalon is the one they were. Avalon, there's two options on that proposal. Yeah, option one, option two. Option one. Yeah, he was looking to see. Okay. 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 Okay.
Ist aber auch wieder auf der Ziel erreicht. The Medical RX has different options. I think she chose one of the options so when she I. put, yeah, when she put the second page on that. But she put down on her comparison, which one did she refer to? Because she put numbers down on one of the comparisons. In the comparisons, she compared the two hundred thousand dollar annual deductible per person against the other company. You know what? So I don't know if that helps us determine. To be honest with you, Carol Holtz will be representing us in this. Am I correct with that? Carol Hall is the one that sent this to us. Okay. Let's table it and she can come back and some clarification. Let's not on this and all. That's one one. That's, uh, I think Carol is, well, oversaw it. Carol oversaw yeah, this. Carol. This is an insurance thing. So I think she needs to get back to us and give clarification of what she's recommending. Has to be what? We can't give something if we can't. We can't vote on something if we don't have clarification for the person who's doing it. The comparison is based on what? The 215. Well, the only difference is the 215. Everything else is the same. So this is the. And there's no money the here. See, but see this to the. This is Mr. There. President, I move that we uh, approve true. option one of the medical and RX coverage. Is there a second on that? Folks? Second. Option one is based on the fact that in her comparison she, she could use the two hundred thousand dollar option one to compare against the other company. Yeah, because the other option had 215, right? right now? Um, mm -hmm. Can we... Well. Can we call her right now? Let's find out. Can we get right. a hold of her? I just want to make sure that we're right. sure which one we're right. supposed to be approving. Can we... We have an August 1. Look at your... Uh, Approve option one pending verification from Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall. Yeah, I, I, right, right. That's the last one. And although it includes some other items that the other one doesn't include. Right. That's savings. I think our first page, if you kind of look at it, if you read the front page of what she's saying there, it closes the cost comparison between the current carrier, Symmetria, and Avalon. And there in the second paragraph of what she's saying, as you see, there will be an estimated annual saving of $33,000. This amount is based on the medical enrollment. So I think right there, if you go to page two, it's self-explanatory, where she could have got counter savings. So she's looking at option one. My recommendation is simply the 
Hello? Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. It's, it's the big mouth Carrie here speaking to you. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm sorry that um, it was confusing. Um, what um, um, was asking. recommended by Kessler, Wolf, and Miller, and um, Marie reviewed it, and also um, Mr. Simonetta reviewed it, and it's the um, exact coverage of what we had with Symmetra which is the 200,000 um, limit and the 39.5 aggregate. Okay, so you're, rec you're recommending option one. That, that's what everyone was recommending, okay. yes. Exactly. And, that's, and the um, rate is nine, I think 903 for single yes. and 25 37. Um, for uh, family. Okay. Yes, and it's imperative that this does get approved because we must have these COBRA rates in place by June 30th. June 30th? Yes, she's July 30th. Oh, July 30th. Sorry, okay. wrong month. That's okay. All right, you okay. answered my questions. Any other I, yes, I have a question. On the previous mm -hmm. vote on Bollinger for the athletic accident okay. insurance. Okay, that, I do not handle the student coverage. Okay. So that is, um, was always handled directly by the business manager for it. And that, but I do know that that increase was due to the high number of claims that um, w was submitted. I think the claims increased by, if I remember correctly, like 80,000. It was quite mm -hmm. a bit. So, we, we, um, have a, we have a policy renewal cost, mm -hmm. and then we have four alternatives underneath that. That are at a reduced cost. Um, I, I'm not sure what was recommended. Um, David Wolf from Kessler Wolf and Miller. He um, is the one that um, brought the proposal. So I'm I'm really not really well versed in it. And we voted on it, so we really can't. I know. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Carol. Thank you for that clarification. Carol. Anybody okay. else? Thank, thank you, Carol. You. Sorry for interrupting your evening. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much for um, calling if you have a question on it, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Now we understand that, and we are voting on option one. Not going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Where am I? Let's see. I got it. Financial matters, bills, and reports. Motion for one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. Motion. Second. Discussion. Yes. Um, on the uh, expenses for the general fund on the fourth page, which is the expenditures, the 500 series, which is other purchase services, we have gone over this year on that line item by $1.6 million. I bring it up because last month we were under still by $232,000. So that's a $1.8 million you know, jump in a one month time period. And I went back and looked to see what those expenditures were. Um, and a lot of it's like tuition to other schools, there's some IU transportation costs, things like that. What concerns me is that, and I remember, I seem to recall last year Marie saying some of those things we have to pay maybe a little bit earlier something for, for next year but last year at the same time on that same um, 500 series we wound up at the end of the year I went back to 
the board line. So I don't know what happened after the audit report, but looking at the same month, we were over by $2 million on the 500 series last year. And for next year, on the same, we've budgeted um, $7.1 million in the 500 series, approximately, which is um, you know, slightly more than we budgeted this year, but still well under where we wound up this year. And I know there were some anticipated savings in the IU transportation and things, but I would just like to point out that, that we're showing a trend in our budget. I don't know on the audited books what the final numbers looked like, because I didn't have an opportunity to review those. But I'd just like to make sure that point that out now. We it's had to transfer in our Friday packet last Friday. There was a mention of transferring from one account to another, and I'm wondering if that has something to do with that. Transferring the amount of money from one Ronnie, account right to another. Um, sorry, Ronnie. No, that's okay. I don't think it has to do with any transfers. No. I know we always get a large uh, bill in the month of June from the state. Um, it's for think of it now, I will certainly be glad to look it up and get back to everybody by email. Um, I would need to look at the detailed reports right. to Can make sure. That? But we do get some you know, extraordinary expense, expenses in the month of June. Mm -hmm. So that's not unreasonable to me that that's what that would be, but I'll look yep. up exactly what it is. Great. And I'll email. Thank right. you. Okay. Is that sufficient enough answer? Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? All right. That's it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, now we're going to the addendum that you have attached with you, item the MTI production contract. Have a motion before we get to that. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. Okay. Okay. No discussion on this? That said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we have item 12, which is interest assistance on non-agenda items. You can feel free to come up to the microphone and speak now on non-agenda items. Once, twice, out of here. Correspondence acknowledgments. Is that anything? I we haven't got to commit meetings, but go ahead if you have something. I just have one, and I don't know if this is the appropriate place, but I'm not. I was looking to see where the appropriate place was. I was wondering, and it's a little bit out of context here, but if we could at least have a moment of silence for the Cuck family for. Oh my God! If I that would so be, sorry, would that be the appropriate me. place? Yes, we can. If we're we'll eyes, and we'll do that. We'll do that now. At the beginning of the. I, I missed that before we used to start that with the, with the meetings. Thank you for that, Karen. Many of us attended um, the services and um, obviously, you know, our thoughts and our prayers will be back there. So thank you, Karen, because they are on our mind and always. <coughs> okay, Mr. Williams, ad hoc committee reports. Mr. Riley. Mr. President, the. Uh, CIU 20 board did not meet this month. Next meeting will be August 24th. Eastern Area Public Library did not meet this month, and their next meeting will be September 6th. Okay. CIT, Mrs. Mandarino. Well, Carrie, we were happy to see you there. It was a very short meeting, but not all board members attended. It was something else. But the next meeting is. 7 p.m. on the 11th. Okay. Uh, while we're getting on these meetings, uh, we will send you a list of various committees if you wish an interest in it. The time being, I am doing CIT. I could either stay on and I can, you know, if you wish to. Okay. Doesn't matter. You know, I can get off another one and you can gladly take one of the other ones from me. We're, we can work it out. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Yeah, because that's no big deal to me. All right. Um, Dr. Volcano is not here, so we don't have anything from the MCC board. Mrs. Ellison, you have PSBA. PSBA. 
Um, well, we just shared about the conference coming up in October, which is probably the biggest item right now. I have not seen the platform, obviously. The platform will be coming soon as to what we'll be voting on. Um, other than Can you that, that to us when you get it, oh, absolutely. Um, and other than that, um, stay current because there's a lot of changes going on at the state level, legislatively wise. So um, just be aware if our voices can be heard at the legislation level, I think that it needs to be put to high priority. Okay. I like Thank that. you. What about your ad hoc task force? You're the next on that. The ad hoc aquatic. task aquatic task force. We have not reconvened okay. since they picked up their new um, emphasis <laughs> with the finance, not the finance, but the foundation. Um, foundation, foundation. The foundation. Yeah. So we will probably try to reconvene once September starts up. Okay. The next one is you too, Mrs. Allison, the TIF committee. I got a phone call. I forwarded it to you today. And I, I, I returned the phone call. Okay. Um, there's no new news on that at this point. They are now going to Palmer Township on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, if anyone wants to attend the township meeting to hear the first display of what the TIF will involve and everything. It might be helpful to formulate questions if anyone has questions. Didn't we have um, a meeting last month with them here? We, we had a meet, not not a board gonna, meeting. Yeah, I mean, you had a meet. We, with the, we had a meeting, meeting, and I was in attendance. Um, Mr. Foyne was there. I'm trying to think. Are What's that? Are they coming to the August meeting? They, they were they were thinking that August would be a timely, you know, position for them to make a presentation to the board publicly. So that's why I'm saying if anyone has an opportunity to go to the Palmer Township meeting on Tuesday night, it might be helpful for any of us to formulate our questions or whatever. For And certainly I have all the information that they've shared with me. So if anyone wants to call me, that's fine. So as you mentioned, us at our committee, we have not met. I don't know when we're going to meet. Uh, I should have got that date from Mr. Kidd before we left. Board members or president have anything to say? Board members have anything individually? If not, Mrs. Holtberg, it's been my pleasure to serve with you. Thank you, Mr. Been Myers. enjoyable. Uh, I really enjoyed our time that we spent with the teachers. Yes, it was, it was. You know, we bounced off each other. It was a good time. We, we, still, have, we still haven't gone out, though, yeah, you know, for, done, for pizza. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done the pizza thing yet. <laughs> but that said, folks, um, state of committees, there were no meetings in July, and we will have uh, no, no meetings next month either? Okay. With that said, no, no more meetings until uh, September. No. August. August. Committee meetings. <laughs> September's committee meetings. Board meetings, 18th of next month. All right, that's it. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.